Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PSP games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So for today's video, you're already going to need to have both dev mode and RetroArch installed on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. That's not something I'm going to be showing you in today's video. I will leave a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do all of those things. What you can do is watch that first and then come back here. And then I'm going to be specifically showing you how to load up and play PSP games on your Xbox. So for this to work, we're going to be needing to do a few things. The first thing we need to do is open up our Xbox. We're going to need to open it up in dev mode. And we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. This is what we had to use to install RetroArch previously, but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play PlayStation 1 games. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. So for us to bring our BIOS file to RetroArch, it is technically possible to do it from the web portal. However, I've always had a lot of issues with that, so I would recommend doing it through a file browser instead. So what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our Xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our BIOS files via the USB over to our Xbox directly. So what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a file explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox dev portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done, we're going to be coming back to our Xbox dev portal. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here. We're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file that appx that we just downloaded previously click open select your file select next then select start and then your file will start to install now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your xbox and just like that the file should be installed once your file browser is fully set up, we're ready to come back to our computer and we're going to be setting up two things. One is we're going to be getting our PPSSPP assets. And the second thing we're going to be talking about is games. We're going to be putting both of these on an external drive and then we're going to be going back to our Xbox. So the first thing we're going to be doing is coming to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be the download link for PPSSPP. What we're going to be doing is coming here and we're going to be downloading the zip version for Windows. Simply come here, come to the PPSSPP and download the latest version in a .zip file. Now this might take a couple seconds to download. Once your download is done, move it to a location where you can find it easily. At the moment, I have it on my external drive. I'm going to need to have it here in a moment anyway. What we're going to be doing is extracting the contents of this zip. We can do this really easily in Windows by simply right-clicking, clicking Extract All, simply click Extract, and then our contents are going to extract. Once your contents are extracted, you will have all these asset files here. What we're looking for specifically from this is our assets folder. I'm simply going to be copying this. I'm going to be going back to my root folder at my PSP and I'm going to be pasting it here just to have our assets folder. Everything else from this point, we can simply delete. And then we're going to be renaming our assets folder to PPSSPP. So basically what we just did here is got all of the necessary assets from our PPSSPP emulator. And we're going to be bringing these over to RetroArch to set this up a little bit later. From this point, we're ready to talk about games. And before I get too far into this, I will mention, I'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to download games. Although games are really, really easy to find, a quick Google search will help you out. Or you can look at creating dumps of your existing games. This can be a little bit tricky. However, I'll try to lead you in the right direction with some links in the description down below. However, if you downloaded your games like me, they will most likely come in a .7z, like my game is right now, or a .rar format. If this is the case, you will need either WinRAR or 7zip to extract your games. I'll be leaving both of these linked in the description down below. In today's video, I'm going to be using 7zip. However, the process is very similar with WinRAR. To extract our game from a .7z file, we simply right click. We hover over 7zip. We click extract files if you want to choose a location or extract here if you just want to extract it here. And then our file will start to extract. Now, this can take a couple of seconds. PSP games start to get a little bit bigger than some of our previous consoles. So you might just have to be a little bit patient here. Once your game is extracted, it may come in a .iso format like I have right here. And this is one of the formats we can currently use for RetroArch. The second format that may also work is a .cso file. Although I don't usually see these too often. So typically you will see a .iso file. And this is exactly what we're going to be looking for in RetroArch. From this point, we're ready to extract our external drive with both of our PSP and our game contents on it. And we're going to be heading back over to our Xbox and we're going to be continuing from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. 
from this point, what we're going to be doing is coming here and we're going to be opening up the Files Explorer application that we installed a little bit earlier. Simply click the A button here to launch it from our dashboard. From this point, we'll be brought to our My File Explorer UI. What we're going to be doing is using the right thumbstick and we're going to be hovering over removable storage devices. We're going to be clicking the A button here and here we're going to have to locate to first where our PPSSPP content is that we extracted previously. So for me, it's in my BIOS and ROMs folder. It's in my Xbox folder. It's in my BIOS folder. And here inside my PSP folder, I will see my PPSSPP folder that we created previously. What we're gonna be doing from this point is copying this folder. To do this, we need to hover over it. We're gonna be pressing the start button and we're simply gonna be clicking copy folder. From this point, we're ready to go back to our RetroArch folder to set this up. To do this, what we're gonna be doing is coming to the isolated storage here on my library on the left. We're gonna be clicking the A button, and right now we'll be brought to a blank folder. That's because at the moment, we're currently inside my My Files Explorer application. We're actually gonna be going up one level higher to the packages folder right here. Simply click A on this, and here we will see a list of all the current applications installed in our Xbox. For today's video, we're going to be looking for our RetroArch folder. This will most likely start with a folder named 1E4C. As you can see, I have mine right here. We simply need to click A on this and we'll be brought inside our RetroArch folder. From this point, we're going to be coming to the local state folder here again. We're then going to need to scroll down on this folder. To do this, you can use your right thumbstick and simply point it down. And we're going to be looking for the system folder right here. Again, simply click A. And here's where we can put all the necessary BIOS files and content for our cores. What we're going to be doing is pasting our file here. To do this, we can simply click the start button again. We're then going to be hovering over paste. We're going to be clicking the A button and we're going to be pasting our PSP folder inside here. And just like that, our PSP folder is going to be inside our RetroArch folder. From this point, we're ready to leave my files explorer. To do this, just press the Xbox button. We're going to be going home and we're going to be brought back to our dev mode UI. From this point, what we can do is click down one. We're going to be launching RetroArch and then we're going to be setting up and start loading up PSP games from there. Once RetroArch opens up, we should be brought to the main menu right here. What we're going to be doing first is loading our core. To do this, we're going to be clicking load core and here we're going to have to scroll down until we see Sony. Once we're on Sony, we're going to be looking for Sony PlayStation or more specifically here, PPSSPP. Once you have this, we're simply going to be clicking the A button to select it. And then you'll see down on the bottom left, PPSSPP is our currently active core. From this point, what we're going to be doing is locating to our games. To do this, again, we're going to be coming to the main menu. This time, we're going to be clicking down one and we're going to be clicking A on load content. And we're going to need to locate to where we downloaded our games to. Now, if you've connected an external drive, it's going to be on your E drive. However, I currently have my drives partitioned. So for me, it's going to show up on my F drive, but for you, it'll most likely show up on your E drive. From this point, you'll just need to locate to where your games are on your external drive. Right now, I have my Tekken6.iso file right here. You simply need to select it. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read this file type, they will all show up here. However, our currently active core, PPSSPP, will show up at the top here. So again, we simply click the A button again, and then you'll have to wait a couple of seconds while your game is being transferred to your Xbox. PSP games can get pretty big, so this might take a couple of seconds. You might need to be a little bit patient here, but in a couple of seconds, your game will load up. And just like that, my PSP game is loading up. You can see it going through all the menus right now, and it works really, really well. Now, depending on the game you're playing, you might get different performance. However, in a couple of games I tested, they were fine. I had a couple of graphical issues and bugs with a couple of the games I tested, but of course your experience may vary depending on what you're playing. From this point, we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of the settings that you can do with RetroArch. What I'm gonna be doing is pressing down and select to open up my menu, or you can select whatever menu combination you set up from yourself. Here we'll see all the default RetroArch settings. But what we're going to be doing is scrolling down until we see the option setting right here. If we click A on this, we will get some core specific settings. And here I'll just show a couple that I think are worth looking at. The rest you can feel free to experiment around with. The first one I recommend taking a look at is the internal resolution. So by default, it is set to the PSP resolution. However, you can feel free to come in here and set it up to any multiplier that you want. This will require a restart to come into effect. The second one is the confirmation button. By default, it's going to be the cross or in this case, the A button. But you can feel free to change this if you're used to a different combination, you can set it up however you'd like. As far as the rest of the settings, I didn't actually feel like I needed to play with anything else, although you can feel free to come in here and experiment with any of the other ones. This is a pretty good emulator overall, and depending on what you're trying to play, it will work really, really well. But feel free to come in here and play around with any other settings if you feel you need to. The next thing I would recommend doing is creating a game playlist. As you can see, I have one right here for Super Nintendo. What this is gonna do is concatenate all of your games in a simple selection right here. And it's really easy because you can attach a core to each one. So whenever you come here and select it, it will automatically load up everything correctly. And you can simply map all of your games here so they're really easy to access. I'm not gonna be showing you that in today's video but I will be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below where you can check that out. It's definitely something I'd recommend doing and it will help save you a lot of time in the long run. 
Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play PSP games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching until next time as always. Keep it saucy. Peace.